Howard. I'm Dustin. We're from Icon Technologies and we're going to talk about tanks today. So when we started this project, we found an issue with one of our tanks. So first off, what we did was we went underneath our camper and took apart our underbelly. And this exposed all our tank fittings and tanks and locations and stuff like that. Then we went inside the camper and we decided to take everything apart to expose our vent pipes um, for each tank and took our toilet off and started exposing the, the shower and the bathroom and different areas to remove our tanks. On the unit standing behind us has an outdoor kitchen. On the outdoor kitchen, it has the, the sink with a, with a shallow drain um, into the gray tank and it's all concealed, so it's very difficult to find it. So make sure you double check that, you're, you cut that before you try and remove the tank. Accessibility to some of these fittings is gonna be a little difficult throughout the, throughout the stage of removing the tank, but we're gonna show you how to do this. So let's get started by measuring and finding out which tank we actually need. First thing is to identify is where the drain is, and that'll help you just narrow down your selection of available tanks that will fit this application. Next is doing overall measurement, keeping in mind that the flange size will change uh, from manufacturer to manufacturer. We offer inch and a quarter flange, so just take that into account when you're sizing up. The other thing you're gonna find is there's gonna be at least three fittings on every tank. You're gonna have a drain, you're gonna have at least one vent, and then you're gonna have one or two uh, fittings where sink water or toilet water, that type of thing is gonna go in. This one happens to have four fittings. We've got a drain, we ended up with one vent here, sink, and the shower going in. So that's what we've got for this. So we've got our tank upside down. We're gonna take our measurements now for, for finding our, our next tank. So this tank measures 63 by 24 with a height of roughly seven inches. Uh, this tank has a, an, a side end drain um, that we're going to look with also four level sensors. So you can either take your measurements, call our, our customer service team, or look in our catalog and find uh, the number that uh, this tank will cross-reference to. Right here. There we go. So that's the tank that we want. The next step for ordering tank is to find out what fittings you need. This particular tank has a three inch outlet, inch and a half inlets and a vent pipe. So we'll start by measuring just from two sides is what we want to do. One side being your fixed frame rail and we'll just measure off this side because it's more convenient because of the fittings on here. This is where the adjustable rail is. So this is what is going to pinch it in later on. So, so we'll start by measuring the fittings just so we have some, some reference later on. And just notice that Dustin is just measuring, like I said, just off the two edges here for everything that we've got here. So 12 by 16. And we're just making note of what we're doing here. 11 and a half. By 20. Perfect. So there we go. Okay, we've got our new tank in. Uh, we've taken our measurements on center. We've marked everything out and drilled the holes. And then there's two types of fittings you can order. The glue-in type, and then there's the grommets. The rubber grommets, these are flexible, that type of thing. So right now I'm just gonna show you quickly how to do a glue-in fitting. A little bit of acetone. All this does is just clean and, and gets the grease and everything off. So you just wanna do a quick wipe. And just around the fitting as well, like that. ABS polymer glue. We're just gonna apply a bead around the fitting. And just give it a small spin, just, uh, just to work the ABS glue around and then just run a bead around the whole fitting like that. And that just helps seal it up. And this will probably take about 24 hours to sort of cure. On this particular installation, we're gonna use rubber grommets. So something that you wanna keep in mind is when you're drilling your hole, um, you wanna drill your hole to the outside ID of the inside part of the fitting to make sure you have a proper seal. And when you go in, you want to collapse it like this, so you can get it started in this groove. It's very key that you get the lid to seat nicely inside that groove, because that groove is what's going to make your seal for this project. So you'll start by wedging the first part in, and literally 
compressing the fitting in like that. Once you have it in like this, just give it a rotate because by rotating it, you're gonna allow the inside of the seal to seat. So by turning it, yeah. and you'll feel it, all of a sudden it'll be, it'll, it'll slide in real nice. You've got it seated just perfectly. And a little bit of soap on there doesn't hurt either, just to help feed in getting it in there a little easier. And something that's very key is there should not be a lot of play side to side. When this pipe goes down in, it'll expand that fitting and it just pushes it up against the sidewalls. And that's what gives you your seal. Okay, we just got a cutaway view here and we're just gonna show you the proper placement of, the, of these rubber grommets. So as you're pushing it down and in or working it in, it's gonna end up seating like that. When your pipe goes in, like I said, that expands it and pushes against the sidewall. And that's what gives you your seal when it expands like that, so. Okay, the next step now is installing our dump valve on here. So we're just gonna take some ABS glue and put a liberal amount. Make sure we don't get any inside this valve in here. This is your uh, gate. We get a, a, a decent amount all over, all over the inside of this fitting. And with the glue on, we're just gonna put it onto the fitting here. Work it in and just give it a slight twist just to work the glue around again. And we wanted this at a 90 here, so we're just gonna leave it just like that and let her set. So once we've got our hub glued on, there's many different options on how to get to your termination end. Termination end is where your um, flexible hose will connect to. So different options are hub to hub connections, hub to spigot connections. So our ABS thermal form tanks that Icon sells have spigot ends on it. So you'll need a hub to hub connection when you're coming off of that to connect to your pipe, which then will connect to either different 90s or 45 or however your, your old tank was configured to coming out of your unit. I would recommend doing this after the tank is already installed. On this unit, we have a hub to hub, so we're gonna wanna connect a 90. Now there's two different types of 90s. On this 90, we have a spigot end, which is smaller, and the hub end, which is bigger. So when we come out of our unit, we're gonna to wanna to put the spigot end into the hub with some glue, our ABS glue. So we'll fit it in nice and tight. Next, we know we need a, a short piece of pipe. So we're gonna take our ABS pipe and a pipe size is a spigot size. Right. So if you ever need to make a cross reference, pipe size is the same size as a spigot. So we'll put that in with our glue, which then gets us to our termination end. And termination ends can either come in a spigot or a hub as well. We will glue this on like that, and then work to the outside of our tank. So on Icon's website, we will have different fittings and different stuff like that. So when you're ordering your tank, make sure you take a look at this assembly process as well. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the black tank for just a minute. The, the only difference from the black tank to the gray tank on our application is the area where the toilet's going to mount. So on this particular one, we went with a glue-in fitting, threaded, and I'm just gonna to touch a little bit on, the option is, again, you can go to the three inch grommet, and again, you're gonna just cut that hole exactly to the size of this, and you would just want a spigot flange, floor flange, and that just pushes in like that. And again, it just expands our seat and gives us a nice seal. So the, a couple of variations you would have, if you've got a three quarter inch floor, you would just go threaded, and then with a threaded toilet flange, uh, put a bit of pipe dope around it, and thread it down until you good and tight, and screw it down into the floor like that, and making sure that your toilet flange bolts are lined up in accordance with where you want your toilet facing, right? These have to be perpendicular to your toilet. So we've got a thicker floor to deal with now. Like on this unit, we've got a two inch, I think two inch, two and a quarter inch floor is what we're dealing with here. So we're gonna thread this hub in, and this gets glued down and in. You wanna go down to around the two inch mark. And this one happens to be adjustable. So even after it's glued in, you've got the adjustability. And then you screw down, line it up with where your toilet's supposed to be. 